good afternoon and welcome to CEC live lectures. Uh, dear friends, as you all would know, I am Dr. Pavitra Bharatwaj and I am uh, a teacher of computer science in a prestigious college at the University of Delhi. So, as you all are aware that we have been uh, pursuing the topic of computer networks for the past uh, series of two lectures and today we will be continuing in our topic on computer networks itself. So, if we, if we quickly go through what we have already done in the past two lectures. So, we had talked about what are computer networks, what are the different components of a computer network, how does a computer network function, you know and different aspects related to the architecture and formulation of a network, how a network can be laid out, you know the topologies in which you know the physical layout of uh, computers or devices within a network and the pros and cons of the different topologies. Besides this, we had also discussed about the important types of networks or you know based on their size or based on the number of nodes or the number of devices which are connected to a computer. So, we had talked about three types of networks you know we had talked about the local area network which is relatively smaller you know it is confined to a building or maybe to a campus. We had talked about a metropolitan area network which is generally used to connect you know offices of uh, the same company with which are spread in a in a area of a city or a metropolitan area and then we had talked about the wide area network which is basically which does which we can say is a, you know a boundary less network which can encompass the entire you know earth and the global network or even the internet that we had discussed. Now, when we talk about you know wide area networks or when we talk about how computers can be connected. So, definitely you know in uh, some in most networking books you we will see that there is a distinction which is made basically right. So, the distinction what is made is that you know the word internet that we use it is in at some places you will see that the word is written with a capital I, I internet right. At the other places you will see that the word internet is written with a small i. So, it is very important and interesting to note here that you know this small i and capital I is not an inadvertent thing which has been done. It has been done very meaningfully because when we are using the word or the term internet with a small i. So, we basically mean that it is an interconnection of networks, it interconnection of computers and uh, different networks are interconnected together. So, the, it need not necessarily basically uh, you know it means that it is an interconnected network right. But when we use the term internet with a capital I basically, so that would definitely mean that we are referring to the global network and you know which is laid down very systematically which has a very well defined architecture and that is used to you know connect all the millions and billions of computers and devices across the world. Right. So, it is important here that we understand and we mark this difference between the usage of the two terms internet with a capital I and internet with a small i. Okay. So, now if we talk about the internet architecture, so it is very clear that you know there are three main things that we need to pay attention when we are talking about the internet architecture. First main part is the backbone or you know the multiple networks which have been created by you know big networking companies like AT&T or Verizon or NTT. So, this is the backbone which is owned by them and this is the bedrock you can say which is used to provide internet services to all the other two types of networks. So, you have one backbone to which you know you have provider networks which are connected. So, the backbone gives connection to the provider networks and the backbone also you know it, it is connected the different backbones are connected to each other using a very sophisticated and a very complex you know switching architecture which are known as the peering points right. So, these peering points basically they connect the different backbones and then of course, you have the provider networks which are used to you know connect or used to draw the services of the internet from the backbone. 
right and then of course after the provider network we have the customer network right so the you know the internet it has got several backbones it has got several provider networks and it has got multiple customer networks also so the backbones as we have already said that you know these are owned by some giants like the sprint and you know the verizon etc and these are connected through the peering points and then the second level as we have discussed in the diagram as we see it is the smaller you know networks which are called the provider networks right and they use the services of the backbone and the provider networks are actually connected to the backbone and sometimes to other provider networks so if we say that the backbone if you know if we say that the backbone and the provider networks are all internet service providers because we are getting internet services from it so the backbone is basically a global internet or you can say it's an international inter uh, internet service provider whereas your provider networks can be considered as national or regional service providers right and then of course you have the customer networks which are the networks at the edge of the internet right so they actually use the services provided by the internet and the people who are using or the customers who are using these networks they pay a fees to the provider and then they receive the various services of the internet so this works basically in this three layered three tiered architecture format first is the backbone then you have the smaller or the next level which is known as the provider network and then from the provider network you uh, the customers can draw the internet services using the uh, customer networks right so this is a basic broad architecture about the internet for the readings on this of course are available there are multiple books which talk a lot about how internet is administered how you know it is con controlled how the activities are uh, regulated on the internet the standards which are followed and a lot of discussion has been done in this regard but for the sake of this session or for the sake of this series we will be confining to only the layout of the internet right so the next uh, thing that you know uh, how you access the internet okay so there are different ways in which you know internet can be accessed or people can take the services of the internet so of course the first and the foremost method which was used and which is used even now in certain parts of the world is using the normal telephone network so when the internet you know it was uh, it came into four so before that only the telephone networks are already connected and most people you know the small businesses or whether it was the houses they already had these connections to the uh, telephone line so the best and the most easiest way was to use the same lines to provide internet connectivity to the people the only difference that was required was that you need to change the voice line between the business or the residence and you know the telephone center and make it into a point to point van connection so basically the same line which was used for transmitting voice will now be used for transmitting data so telephone networks have been widely used and this has been done using two methods basically so the first way in which you know the internet services are accessed using the telephone line is the dial up service so in the dial up service it's very simple that you know the service provider they have a software installed on the user's computer and the user will you know in, uh, use that software and dial to the service provider it is like you know it's very similar the, to making a phone call basically so that phone call uh, is made or that connection is created between the service provider and the customer and then you know the data exchange can take place and the internet services can be obtained so therefore in this you know a mod modem of course is required because uh, this conversion of the data is to take place because now you are using the telephone line to transmit the data so therefore this conversion of digital to analog signal has to be done so which is taken care of by a specific device called the modem so the modem will convert the digital data into its analog form 
uh, when the data is to be transmitted through the telephone line and it from analog back to digital form when the data is to be utilized or processed by a particular computer or a computing device. So, unfortunately, you know the dial up services they are quite slow. And another limitation which was faced was that when uh, you know the line was being used for internet connectivity. So, that time you know it could not be used for making voice connections or it the telephone would you know be rather uh, rendered useless, it could not be used. So, therefore, this, this was not a very very good idea and this was not a very successful idea. So, the another form of service which was introduced to obtain internet connectivity using the telephone line was the DSL services. So, in the DSL services actually it provided you know these uh, the same companies they upgraded the telephone lines and now this could be used to provide better speed and also the limitation that the line could be used only for uh, you know a voice call or it could only be used for internet was uh, you know overcome and therefore now simultaneously voice and data communication could take place through the telephone line. So, there, there were two ways basically one was the uh, DSL and the other was the dial up connection which was used for the telephone lines. Of course, uh, you know later on with uh, how the scenarios have been changing. So, later on when cable TV networks became very popular and those services became you know door to door services. So, that time cable networks were started uh, you know using for providing the internet connections to the people's homes and to the offices. So, uh, you know they could get an internet service through the cable uh, the same wire it could be used and this of course provided the service the speed was better and but of course there was one limitation because again it was coming through cable so a lot of you know uh, quality issues could be faced and also because the same cable could be shared by multiple people in the locality so that issue was also there that how the speed you know it would vary if too many people were logged in using the same cable connection. So, this also was phased out gradually the cable connection and uh, very soon the wireless networks became popular and it is increasingly becoming popular because now this is using a combination of wireless and wired connections basically in case of homes and small businesses. So, therefore, you know they, they take a wireless WAN access and uh, the, the internet is provided to the wireless WAN access uh, through a wire and then within the vicinity of the house or within the vicinity of the building it is distributed using the wireless WAN access. So, therefore, this technology is, is like a blended technology which is being used to provide internet uh, services to the people and this is doing fairly well. This is even in use even in the present day and time this is being used and this is quite well. And then of course, uh, you know there is another way in which people or larger organizations or you know much bigger companies they get connection connected to the internet and that is through a direct connection. So, what they do is that they you know they take uh, they become the local ISP and then they you know they they connect different organization through a leased line. So, they will give a leased line or a high speed van from a carrier provider and connect itself to the regional ISP. So, large university campuses as we know they create their own personal private internet network and then you know they use this internet network to connect to the internet. So, this is again a more sophisticated uh, way of uh, getting connected to the internet and of course, this is not for uh, homes and smaller businesses, but it, per, per it is related to uh, you know bigger audiences and you know bigger uh, bigger larger companies which which can afford this kind of architecture but this is not suitable for smaller organizations or for domestic purposes okay so this was the different you know play, uh, ways in which internet connectivity could be obtained now uh, after we have discussed how one can connect to the internet let us move on to the next phase of you know this uh, topic or this discussion on networks on computer networks basically and let us talk about another concept which is there when you talk about computer communication there is a very important 
uh, you know domain or where there is a very important side which needs to be covered and that talks about the protocols basically. So, we had discussed earlier also that what are protocols in a network or in a communication. So, protocol is nothing but those are the rules basically which are you know to be followed when a communication is happening. So, when two computers they decide to communicate with each other, so they have to abide by, they have to agree to a certain set of rules which is going to determine the communication that is going to happen, right. Now, these protocols can be simple protocols or they can be multi-layered protocols or more complicated protocols. Right. Now, it uh, one very simple and one very interesting analogy can be developed on how you know we can have a single protocol, a single simple protocol which governs a simplest form of communication say between two neighbors and how this protocol needs to be refined or how this uh, simple communication if it becomes you know if it incorporates or if it has multiple you know uh, aspects to it then how you need to refine your protocol structure. So, basically when communication is simple then you need a simple protocol right, but when communication will become complex then the task of the communication or the different steps which are involved in the communication they will have to be divided into simpler tasks. Right, and each task will be given to a different layer you can say. Right, so therefore we will need a protocol at each layer and this is known as protocol layering. So, protocol layering is particularly used when your communication is complex, when there are multiple steps which are involved in the communication and when you want to divide those tasks between the different layers. So, this enables us to make a complex task work or divide into several smaller and simpler tasks. This idea has been you know has been there and it has been noted also and this idea is known as modularity right. So, let us look at a very simple example here. So, this talks about a single layer protocol. Say for example, you know there are two uh, neighbors who are talking to each other directly face to face communication is happening then that is you know uh, one is uh, listening and the other is talking and other one is listening the previous one is talking like this. So, there is only this is the simplest form of communication, but in this communication also we must know that there is a certain way or a certain you know steps which are required even in very simplest communication. Like for example, when two people will meet each other the normal you know courtesy is that they will greet each other, they will you know uh, they will share basic uh, pleasantries with each other. Then there is an acceptable vocabulary which is always you know uh, used with uh, there is a choice of word with words which is you know governed when you when two people are talking to each other then one person speaks at a time could be the possibility and it is always a dialogue that is when two people are talking to each other both have the uh, you know responsibility and the right to talk and then of course when the communication is terminated then also there is some pleasantries which are exchanged. So, this is a single layer protocol which also involves certain kinds of rules, certain kinds of procedures which are done. Now, sing, simple protocol, some simple communications may also be different. Like for example, communication between two individuals or two neighbors or two friends will be very different from the communication which is taking place in a classroom. Right. So, when we when students and professor is giving a lecture in the classroom, the, the scenario of communication will be different there because most part of the time it is going to be a monologue because if the professor is speaking for most part of the time. Then if a student wants to speak, then the student has to follow certain procedure, maybe raise a hand or you know through some gesture the student has to take permission uh, to before speaking from the professor. Okay, so, there are different ways you know in which we need to understand how even simple protocol, simple communication or single layer communications work. Right. Now, for instance, taking the same example of these two neighbors. So, they say for instance, let us take the example that they worked in the same company. 
and you know they were uh, say they were working on a business idea also which they would want to pursue and one of them gets transferred to another city. Now they want to still continue communicating with each other but since now they cannot have a face to face communication so they will have to choose a more complicated manner or more complex form of communication which can be uh, say you know which will involve different steps right say for example they want that the communication which they are sharing right that communication should not be you know accessible by any other person because it is a secret communication say they are working on a particular business idea which they want to keep private which they want not to share it with others right so they will have to devise a mechanism by way of which you know they can encrypt the a message which they are sharing with each other. Say for example, they are writing a letter. So, they will use an encrypted format to write a letter. Now, what is encryption? Basically, encryption can be considered as coding. You know, coding means that when you have some uh, plain text, you use an algorithm or you use some formula to convert that plain text or to convert your original text, I would say, into something which is hidden. Okay, and the person to whom the intended receiver will have a key or will have a solution as to convert that encrypted text back into the original text. So, only the intended receiver can do that, not anyone else, right. So, that is known as decryption, right. So, in this case, we are assuming that the two, uh, you know, people who are talking to each other who want to share the ideas without compromising on the privacy of the message. So, they will have to encrypt the message before sending it and then you know the message is to be sent through the mail ok. So, the letter is to be sent at the receiving end also similar steps are required first the you know the mail is received and then the message is to be decrypted by the recipient only then the message can be once it is converted to the plain text it has been decrypted only then the message can be read only then the message can be understood right. So, this is you know this is the format in which the protocols or in which you know the communication now we see it is becoming complicated. So, instead of face to face communication now we can see that there are steps involved here you have more than two steps which have increased first is you need to encrypt the message second is that the message needs to be sent. Okay, so, therefore, in this type of a structure what we will be needing is we will be needing a protocol layering because the task of communication is not as simple now and it has to be divided into several tasks. So, we will be continuing with protocol layering till then thank you.